All right, guys, I want to show you how to do contour rendering and actually setting up also a turntable camera. Um, real quick, I'm going to pretend we never did a turntable camera. You saw nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this real quick here. Delete that group. And we'll just use, go back to the default one. And uh, one thing you want to do when you do render and show off a, a piece of uh, a, a model that you created, this is one that I'm creating for a cinematic piece. Um, you want to go in here and restrict your viewing area. <clears throat> go to view camera. And what I mean by that is show your resolution gate. This shows you exactly what's going to be rendered. And uh, what I'm going to do here today is show you how to do wireframe, in other words, to see your topology and um, to be able to actually demonstrate it, put it on a little rotating turntable. Now, a lot of times what I like to do because the lighting becomes consistent is just simply turn this guy from one 360 angle to another 360 angle. Ignore my weird geometry down here. His shirt covers that, so you'll never see it, whatever. And, But you can also tag your object and have a turntable camera go around it. So first up, what we need to do, let's actually, we're gonna go into Maya and we're gonna use contour lines. I'm gonna pretend that my contour lines are not active. And we're gonna use mental rate. I'm using three point lighting. This is my main light, this is my fill light, this is my back light. And under indirect lighting, I'm going to turn on final gather. My settings are 200 and 2, which are fine. My shaders I have, I'm using is an MIA shader, MIAX in this particular case. I want to put white to have a little bit more bouncing light because final gather does kind of work like global illumination. It uh, works pretty well. Sometimes when you turn on global illumination and you're using photons, you can get some weird results, so you have to tweak them out. But I don't have any uh, kind of caustics I want to use. I don't have any glass. I don't have any uh, kind of projected light that I want. I just want regular bouncing light. So I'm going to turn on Final Gather. And they have the same type of relationship. Global illumination illuminates things globally. Not only is the light shine on the object, but it also bounces off surfaces. Um, Final Gather uses some of the same properties, but it also gathers some of the information, the points from the other aspects, such as your material and so forth in the scene. Um, Global Nation kind of does that too, but Final Gather I actually like a little bit better sometimes because I don't have to worry about tweaking out my photons so much um, when it comes to Final Gather. He works pretty well. So I have a direct uh, directional light. That directional light I've turned on to have a light angle of 5. I can probably lower that to point 0.2. My Shadow Rays are 2 and Ray Death Limit is 1. That's fine for this particular case. This is the only one that's casting shadow. For my object, I want to go in here and right click on this guy and assign a new material. And the one I want to use, which you heard me mention earlier, is the MIAX. And the reason why MIAX, it works better than regular MIA, because you can also plug in, um, you can also plug in X, um, your normal maps better. You can have a bump map, normal map, even displacement map. And the and regular MIA is kind of weak in that area. So with this set up, I'm going to actually turn on ambient occlusion, which is built into the, the actual material. This can override any ambient occlusion that you've already set up here within the render settings. So I'm not even going to use this. I'm going to keep it so that's on one object, and that speeds things up so you don't have to do ambient occlusion and everything, which the render settings handle. Here we're doing individually, and we're going to set that up to 50. Booyah! 50. There we go. Sorry, I try to keep it real when I can. All right, so... Now we're now going to turn on contour lines and to do so you want to go to the features in the render settings. You want to scroll down to contour and you want to turn that on, enable contour rendering. See I already have mine on. With that on over sampling you can even bump this up to like 5 if you want to. This gives you just a better quality line. And we also want it to select around all poly faces. Now the material you have to do it in two different areas to get the wireframe to show up and again as a modeler, you want to show off your wireframes. This guy's pretty dense and for cinematics. And if your wireframes are pretty dense, what you can do is just get your camera in a little closer to show off the wireframe. From far away, it can have a tendency to flicker in video. Um, my, So I, I did my oversampling to five, again, around all poly faces. And I made my material MIAX. And I turned on my ambient occlusion. One more thing we need to do. Let's go to our window, Windows, Render Settings, Hyper Shade. <clears throat> I'm going to grab this new uh, MIAX material that I made, and let's give it a name. We'll call this uh, The Dude. There's The Dude. 
I'm going to select him and graph hitting these icons. I'm going to graph all input output connections because what I want to get to is my shader, MIAX um, group shader node. And make sure it's the appropriate one. Sometimes two will show up depending on the dependencies of a particular object. In this case, I just need this guy. And I can click on here to get it to come up. And with it selected, I want to go in here and go to my contour, enable contour rendering. And I want to control my width and make it a little bit less. There we go. And you'll see now when we do a render test, we can go in a little bit closer. You see, get some we'll get some really nice quality coming up. It's in the background, sorry about that. Now the wireframe, actually it's right here. When the wireframe renders, it's the a kind of a post process. It comes in last. And it's easy to forget the setting around polyfaces. I did that when I first recorded this video and in class when I was going over it, I'm like, oh no, don't, don't do it again. So I went and uh, had to turn that on later. And I was, thought it was a refresh issue and it turned out not to be, not the case. A lot of refresh issues happen mainly in the OpenGL, not so much on the render, um, but sometimes if you're using shaving a haircut, that those refresh issues can be a problem. You see, hey, notice he's super shiny. We don't want that because it's gonna give us some trouble. So let's go back into our the dude shader, and we're gonna lower his. Uh, we don't worry. We don't have to worry about the refraction, but we do want to turn down reflectivity and glossiness to nothing. And you'll see now. I'll just highlight him for a second. Do, do, do. And notice my quality is really good. So you do want to check that. Just go to quality and set this bad boy to production up here. Preset, you'll see production. That's what you want. All right. So with it selected, right click and we go render, render region. Redo it. Redo it. There you go. Shininess has gone. Shadow's a little bit cleaner. He has his own ambient occlusion built into the shader. Man, when this guy gets animated, whoever's working on this animated short, he's going to be amazing. Oh, yeah, that's me. Sorry. All right, see on render. Da -da -da. There we go. Got the little uh, wireframe showing my uh, polygon edges. And uh, cool. Not too worried about the sexy hair. He has a few irregular, or what do you call it? Irregular quads, which are fine. He just needs to raise his eyebrows and shoot stuff in the face. All right, so that's about it for this. Hopefully this helped you out in understanding how that works with the renderer. But I'm going to show you one more thing before I sign off. And so we're going to do a turntable. So under animate, a lot of people don't know about this. You have turntable underneath animate. And we can open this up and we can choose how many frames you want. In this case, I have 120. Defaults like whatever your time slider's at. So let me close some of these because you don't need them open. Goodbye. G goodbye. And we hit turntable. So what happens is Maya turns this camera into turntable camera. So it doesn't write over your uh, perspective camera. And now you see we have turntable camera on this object. So if your light's nice and even, that's not an issue. That's fine. But what you need to be concerned about is if you want your lighting even. So in that case, what you can do is literally just animate the object itself. You can also connect, though, your lights to this turntable camera. So you could actually parent them underneath it. So when the camera rotates, the lights will rotate. So there's multiple ways to do that. But say you're like, Sean, what if I'm rendering and I noticed my animation is too long or short? Well, student who sounds very timid and strange, I get those a lot in GAD. We're going to go to Outliner. <laughs> what a jerk. We're going to go to uh, our uh, group for this guy. And you'll see the keyframes. And that group is your camera group, and you can name it. But you can go in here, Shift Select grab all the way through the timeline and you can shrink it down or you can increase the length and then now as you play it you'll see the difference between this and now it's a little bit shorter or excuse me takes a little bit uh, takes more uh, time longer I should say and if you want it to loop you'll have to go into your animation settings to fix the looping and that's another lecture I'm not going to get into. All right, that's about it. And now I'm officially done.